Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I know that although we are in the middle of an Omicron surge, uh, everyone hopefully is looking forward to a new year. Hopefully this is the year when we can say uh, goodbye or at least uh, not pay as much attention to this ongoing pandemic. But where we are right now, I think it's certainly important to continue sharing this information with you so you can all make the right decisions for yourselves and your families. And I will start sharing my screen. So overall, there is a persistent global rise as would be expected with this Omicron surge happening everywhere. Hotspots are Europe, the US, Canada, Australia, and cases continue to rise in the US and California. Hospitalizations, unfortunately, are also rising in the US and California. Vaccination at, is at a little bit of a dip compared to last time I talked to you at about 1.09 million doses being given per day in the US. The good news is that about 71% of California is fully vaccinated now, although not doing as well with the boosters. And mortality has plateaued in the US with a slight decrease in California. But keep in mind that uh, this mortality always lags behind the rest of the data a bit. So let's start talking about variants. Uh, Omicron is now over 95% of all cases. If you recall, a couple weeks back, I told you that it was about 73% of all cases. And then the CDC walked that back a bit. But now enough time has passed that uh, I do believe that, that almost all cases are Omicron, although there is still some Delta floating around. And that's important when we think about who is being hospitalized and with which variant. And you can see that this is the overall ratio of Omicron to Delta in all these different regions of the country. And you can see that in California, it is almost all Omicron, but there is still a sliver of Delta. And in particular, in Santa Clara County, uh, when you check the number of cases by variant, as of two days ago, there were uh, still only less than 400 cases of Omicron. Now, um, I think that this likely over the last two days has surged quite a bit and we likely have many more cases now, but it is important to remember that we still have a ways to go before we catch up with how many cases we have seen with Delta. There's just a couple other uh, pieces of information that are interesting to know about Omicron. I'm sure everyone has heard that there is decreased lung infectivity, and this is a really nice summary of those studies by Eric Topol uh, that he placed on Twitter. And it just shows all of these in vitro and animal models that show decreased lung infectivity, viral load, and pathology uh, in the pulmonary region uh, in study after study. So that is likely why Omicron is presenting as a less severe variant than the Delta or others before. And other good news is that this is a summary of six studies showing retained T cell activity against Omicron when people have had either a prior infection or a vaccination. Uh, they have retained a large amount of T cell response versus the Omicron variant. And this is really good news because although antibodies may not show the same response, T cell response is just as important in how our bodies will fight off that infection. And then finally, uh, this is an interesting preprint. Usually I don't show you all preprints because I want to only show you peer reviewed data, but this is uh, a, a great study out of um, the UK. It's called the Evade study and hopefully it will be peer reviewed and published in a journal soon. You can see that this is actually looking at uh, either previously infected and unvaccinated patients or comparing one dose, two doses, or three doses of the vaccines. And when you compare C versus D, this is basically including or excluding the waning of vaccine efficacy over time. And so if you look over here at the D uh, graph, you'll see that getting a third dose, getting the booster of these vaccines actually gives you quite a good response uh, against Omicron uh, and against Delta, uh, compared actually and even better than having a prior COVID infection. So um, I think that this is really good information and uh, we'll go on to talk about vaccinations now. So the US uh, continues to lag behind uh, most other uh, 
uh, first world Western nations and the share of the population fully vaccinated. But we have crossed the 60% threshold, which is good. Hopefully we'll continue to improve in that. And when you look at uh, the, how number, the number of how many people are vaccinated, it's over 200 million and 71 million people have actually received a booster dose. You can see when you break it down by age, we're doing the best in the age over 65 group at 87.7%, with age over 12 being right around 71.3%. When you look at booster doses, we're not doing as well here. You can see that the percent of fully vaccinated patients who are eligible to get a booster, only uh, about 35% of patients have gotten that booster dose. So uh, people should go ahead and get that booster dose because of what I just showed you about Omicron. You can see that we're right at about 1.9 million average doses per day. There's a little bit of a drop off as expected right around the holidays. Hopefully that will pick back up. And when you look at the states, uh, the same states are lagging behind, but slowly but surely all of these states are improving in their percents of fully vaccinated residents. When you look at California daily vaccinations, we also took a dip during the holidays, but now there's a little bit of a boost moving up again. Hopefully that will continue to rise. And then when you look at the comparison of who is fully vaccinated in California versus the US, you can see that when you compare the overall age population over 12, we're locked up with the US. We're 71%, they're 71%. When you look at the age group over 65, we're still trailing. The U.S. overall is at 87, almost 88 percent, and we're still right around 80 percent. So we really need to encourage our elderly population to get fully vaccinated. And then when you look at uh, Santa Clara County, we're doing quite well in age over 18. 92.4 percent of our population is vaccinated. Uh, age 5 to 17 at 62 percent. And when you look at that percent of booster eligible residents who have received a dose, that's a little over half of the population. So overall doing quite well in comparison uh, with the rest of the country and certainly with California, uh, definitely in the age over 65 group in the Santa Clara County, we're doing well compared to both. When you look at cases, you can see that sharp rise at the end of our curve. Uh, you'll see this everywhere across the world, everywhere that Omicron is, this is its signature graph, this very exponential rise at the end of the curve. And what this represents is a 146% increase in cases over the last two weeks. And when you look at where this is happening, it's really focused mostly in Western Europe, the United States, Canada, Argentina, and Australia. This is just a comparison graph to show you that where the US is in comparison to all these other countries. And you can really see all of the countries mirroring that exponential rise. But what's interesting is if you look at South Africa down at the bottom, they had this steep rise, but then they've come right back down quite rapidly. And so hopefully this is what we're going to see. Obviously they have a different type of population than all these other countries and different vaccination status, different uh, endemic COVID uh, infection status. And so we'll see if this happens for all of us as well. When you look at the US, there is also again that exponential increase in the end of the bar, and that represents an increase of 254% of cases in just the last 14 days, so a significant increase. When you look at where the hot spots are, it is really just rapidly spreading compared to prior surges. When I showed you this map two weeks ago, it was really just focused in New York City, and now you can see uh, really spreading across the country multiple areas across the country have hotspots uh, with just as many cases as New York, as Chicago. And when you look at California, there's that same exponential increase at the end of the graph. And this represents an increase, 522% increase over the last two weeks. So really a sharp increase. We were doing quite well and now not so much as far as cases go mirrored similarly in Santa Clara County, you can see that sharp rise. And San Mateo also has that sharp rise. So when we overlook, look overall at cases, everyone has a rise. This is similarly true here at Stanford. You can see that, remember it's the, the red number that is the positive cases, not just the blue. The blue is how many people we're testing and then how many people are positive is in red. 
And you can see that we've really been in just the single to double digits. And suddenly over the last week, we had 175 cases. The overall positivity rate uh, in the last week was 7.7%. That's actually still better than the overall rate in California, which was 15.9%, and better than Santa Clara County overall at 11.2%. This is similarly reflected in our faculty, postdocs, and staff with 100 cases in the last week. When we look at the SARS-CoV-2 in pediatrics, uh, certainly the Omicron variant, as I mentioned earlier, uh, appears to be a milder strain or cause less severe disease. However, we do have to uh, think about unique complications in children, especially those very young children who are not vaccinated and have slightly more flexible, floppy upper airways. And this can cause uh, more complications with upper airway infection. Things like croup-like infection or bronchiolitis is being seen in New York City amongst children. And we'll have to see if that plays out here in California as the surge uh, hits and continues to increase. Overall though, when we look at the share of overall cases that is in the pediatric population, this is normalizing a bit back from when we were at the height of representation in the mid-20 range in November, when we were really seeing the Delta surge. It was affecting children more, and that's because vaccination was holding up against Delta pretty well. However, now that Omicron is being, you know, infecting vaccinated individuals and unvaccinated individuals, a share of pediatric cases is sort of dropping, although the absolute number is rising in both pediatric and adult populations. Thankfully, the number of hospitalizations and mortality in the pediatric population remain quite low. When we look at overall hospitalization in the US, unfortunately, this is rising 50% increase in less than one week. Now, this is not in lockstep to the number of cases, which was much more exponential, but it is significant. And as many of you have heard in the news, does threaten to overwhelm the healthcare system if we're not careful about the way in which we triage patients and treat patients. You can see here in California, similarly, the total number of COVID hospitalizations is rising and the overall ICU hospitalizations are also rising, but to a lesser extent, uh, sort of reflecting that less severe disease in Omicron. When you look specifically at Santa Clara hospitalizations, they are rising, both uh, overall hospitalization and ICU. And when you look at San Mateo, there's also a significant rise there. When you look at San Francisco in the city, there is a rise. You can see that it was dropping really nicely. And now, again, there is a, a rise. But it has not risen to the same extent as it has in other cities. And there may be a wall of immunity in San Francisco, as some people have said. Uh, because of our very high vaccination rate in this uh, Bay Area. When you look at mortality overall, we are seeing a sort of plateau in the U.S. mortality, a plateau that is higher than where we would like to see it. Uh, and when you look at mortality in California, you can actually see a slight decrease. Again, not as sharp of a decrease as we would like to see. In Santa Clara, you can also see that there is a slight decrease, 14 deaths over the last two weeks, and just one death in San Mateo County. And so overall, uh, you know, this may just be a lag behind the cases and hospitalizations, or it may be a reflection of the less severity of Omicron. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. And then again, just to remind you, when you look at vaccination status, uh, unvaccinated patients are five times as likely to contract uh, this disease, and they are 13 times as likely to die from this disease. And this is actually even before um, Omicron and the main surge of Delta that this data is from. So it is even more uh, significant now. I do want everyone to keep in mind that we focus a lot on cases and we focus a lot on mortality and death, but there are other symptoms that people have and this long hauler uh, COVID uh, pandemic may be boiling into its own public health crisis, where people are not just getting sick and either recovering or getting really, you know, in the hospital, there is this in-between uh, group of patients who are growing uh, rapidly that have long-term symptoms that we uh, have not been able to explain or treat very well up to this point. 
One other thing in the news to talk about uh, all over social media yesterday is this term flu rona. And that is basically just, uh, you know, kids or even adults having a flu and influenza infection and a COVID-19 infection at the same time. This is not uh, unheard of, although more rare than just having one or the other. It basically uh, is because we test anyone that's coming into the hospital for multiple viruses, COVID-19, uh, influenza, uh, respiratory syncytial virus, multiple viruses are tested for. And so uh, it's not uh, unlikely that sometimes we will get people testing positive for more than one. And then finally, I'm gonna wrap up by talking about the recent uh, CDC uh, change in guidelines because it has been quite controversial and there's been a lot of discussion amongst the healthcare community about whether this is good or not good or what this means. And today the or yesterday, the CDC backed its previous advice for five-day isolation down from 10 days and saying no test is needed. And I would just uh, point out that uh, although there are certainly some economic uh, reasons and certainly some uh, reasons based on the healthcare system and, and how well it can continue functioning with so many cases happening, uh, but to say that this is based on really solid, sound science, I would have to disagree. Uh, when I look at the science, uh, there's a few different areas that I look, but this was published just right now in New England Journal of Medicine. And this actually looks at viral dynamics of SARS-CoV-2 variants in vaccinated and unvaccinated persons. And you can see that this was actually based on almost 20,000 patients in the NBA that were enrolled in this study. And in unvaccinated uh, people, the sort of clearance time, the mean clearance was just over seven days, 7.5 days. And even in vaccinated patients, the mean clearance was at 5.5 days. And that means that there's a whole host of the, the people that have this disease process that are going to still be infectious or shedding virus after that time point. And so um, the caveat is that this was evaluating alpha and delta and other variants that were not a concern and did not include Omicron. And so perhaps as Omicron takes over, we will, we will gain more data to show that this uh, should change. I don't know that we have sound data to say that people should not uh, test at the end of the five days. I think that the availability of testing can be certainly debated, but to say that the science supports not testing, I don't believe is true. And so with that, I hope that's been helpful information for you. Uh, I hope that that helps you make decisions. Uh, I hope everyone gets vaccinated, gets boosted, continues to wear their masks and uh, isolates if they are exposed. And I hope that we can get through this. Hopefully if the US uh, shows its cases the same way that other countries who have gone through this before, we will see a rapid decrease and maybe by the end of the month we'll be in a good place again. For now, try to stay safe and healthy and I'll see you next time.